Pop art began in the late 1950s, spanning through the 1960s primarily in America and also in Great Britain. The beginnings of pop art rooted from after World War II when the economy boomed, causing salaries to increase, creating more time for mass production and leisure to commence. This started a new kind of industry that was heavily run by brands and ads like never before. Soon, leading into the 1950s, movies and TV grew with the creation of a new wave of pop culture and the beginnings of pop art. From the growing industry of commercial items and advertising in America came a revolt by pop artists who challenged these new norms of everyday life. They took items that were mass-produced or items that were considered from low culture and critiqued them to incorporate into their own lives to create world-famous works of art. They took everyday items such as Coke bottles pictured here produced by Andy Warhol, hot dogs, and street science, and turned them into world-class art that was seen all across the nation. Besides pop art being inspired by everyday commercial items, pop artists also pulled inspiration from the growing media of TV, movies, cartoons, and music. Pop culture flourished in the late 1950s, leading into the 1960s, which attributed to the growing fame of specific individuals, themes, and films that encompassed the American dream of glamour, luxury, success, and beauty. Those who were artists of the pop art era heavily were influenced from cultural icons at the time, including Marilyn Monroe, pictured here. This artwork by Andy Warhol was created shortly after her death, as Andy Warhol depicted the flaws of how divinely perceived celebrities were in society. He represents her as a celebrity figure that is care a carefully structured illusion. By having her image being recreated in different colors, it represents her constant presence in the media. As displayed through this art piece, it represents how artists of the time often embraced and critiqued pop culture, sometimes glorifying them or taking their perceived persona represented in the media and incorporating it back into their work. A key characteristic of the most famous pop artworks was that its main focus was reproduced or juxtaposed everyday images at popular at the time. This is also known as the art term of appropriation, a strategy for all artists of the pop art era. It was found in the majority of pop artists everywhere to find images, people, or themes in pop culture and then using the elements of them or flaws to convey in their art. Pop artists described their work to be anything walking down the street anyone would be able to recognize in an instant or a person you would instantly see in the newspaper or on TV. This idea of appropriation challenged the norms of art that had been made in the past as artists took things or people that one would see on a regular basis, but altering them to convey powerful messages and symbols. Pop art has also been recognized under soup can art as symbolized through Andy Warhol's famous and world-renowned Campbell soup cans. This work of art containing 32 Campbell soup cans were displayed in 1962 to represent the mass production at the time. This nickname can be shown through his work as it was the primary piece to introduce pop art to America. Silk screening, most notably used as a technique by Andy Warhol, but also by many other artists of pop art, created their works of art, being able to start with a stencil and transfer it onto a canvas with the ability to reproduce the exact copy multiple times. Silk screening is a form of stenciling where one would carve out specific parts of their picture they hope to put on canvas. And from this, one can fill the empty spaces with coloring substances to add a contrast between the light and the dark. This process of silk screening can be displayed in this video of Andy Warhol himself completing this process for his artwork creation of Marlon Brando. He starts by putting a mesh piece over a frame, then putting the screen on top of the paper print. After, one would apply photo emulsion and the image would be put onto the mesh. Then the image can be transferred onto the canvas and have ink added to it of different colors. One of the most famous and influential artists of the pop art movement was Andy Warhol, who was born on August 6, 1928 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Before entering the art scene, Warhol was already one of the most successful and highly paid commercial illustrators in New York. He introduced pop art to the U.S. with his creation of the Campbell Soup Cans in 1962, and from there, his career as a pop artist skyrocketed. His work can be described as simple on the outside, but told heavy truths about materialistic changing societies when inspected further. This simple tactic he often used caused him to be perceived by critics as a fraud of art itself. In 1965, Andy Warhol 
retired from pop art where he entered the world of film, creating more than 600 films between 1963 and 1976, mixing medias in his films such as music, film, light, and dance. In the late 1970s, Warhol returned to the world of art as an abstract expressionist. This can be seen through this example of his recreation of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, which he juxtaposed large logo brands with images of Christ and the Apostles. Roy Lichtenstein attended Ohio State University where he studied drawing and design. In college, his main forms of art were sculpting animal figures and creating portraits influenced by Picasso and Braque. His art inspiration was mainly drawn from cartoons and comics when he began to create pop art. His distinct pop art style included bright primary colors and bend day dots to add texture to characters' faces, as appeared here in his comic. His art contained blending mechanical reproduction and drawing by hand, which he studied in college, and also used an enlarger to project his art onto canvases. Keith Haring is one of the most prominent late pop artists of the time. Herring's art really became notable in the 1980s as he began graffiti art in the New York City subways where he drew on the advertising panels that were empty with white chalk. He was most known for these murals he painted and drew all over the world. Herring also used his artwork to advocate for AIDS awareness and was diagnosed with AIDS in 1988. His work was considered low art to most, but again like other pop art works, told deep truths about society and the U.S. His cartoon and subversive art allowed for Herring to inspire many other artists and cartoonists alike with his positive and cheery imagery. Pop art created a large impact of the, on the world of art. It had inspired and paved the way for emerging artists to explore new forms and concepts of art. It inspired artists to change their perspective of how they looked at everyday life and for them to discover their relationship with the world around them. It also created a huge impact on contemporary and modern artists to address, critique, and break down our society and changing environment. Such as artist Bisquat pictured here, who focused on suggest suggestive dichotomies and conveyed themes of racism, political conflict, and social class struggles. Pop art also set the challenge for artists to try new mediums of art. After the era of pop art started to phase out, it encouraged artists to try photography, film, performance art, large installations, and earthworks we often see to this day. Here is an example of large installations done by Yayoi Kusama called the Obliteration Room, which contains a room with a base color of white but is splattered with dots of various colors. Kusama herself describes the room to be, The red and green dots and yellow dots might represent the circle of the earth, or of the sun or moon, or whatever you like, which leaves it up to the individual to decide what meaning it holds for them. By leading the way for new contemporary and modern artists, pop art has influenced many generations to allow them to express themselves in new and unique ways unlike ever before to challenge society's norms to create a lasting impact in the world.